Hey everybody, it is Saturday morning and we're going to come in here and get the fish room turned on, do an around the world update all in one video. So the first thing I do is I turn this overhead lamp on shining at the ceiling and that puts enough light in the room that it gets the tanks a little bit lit up. I'm not blasting everybody with a huge amount of light all at once. So then the next thing I do is I get my light turned on over the pond here another enormous source of light that helps get the room ready and now I reach under here I've got one switch under here that turns this whole side on and that does all the tanks all the way around to here and then I've got a single switch over here that I hit and this turns this whole side on and now we are up and running so starting this day's around the world update uh, nothing really going on here in the pond just having a look at it I do have one fish in the pond that has been swimming kind of sideways and laying on its side and kind of moving around funny it's been doing it for a while though, so I don't know what's going on with it. I kind of suspect we're going to find a dead goldfish in here one of these days, but I've been kind of suspecting that for quite a while now, and it's still in there just doing the same old thing. Um, in fact, it is this one right here that has the light white markings on its side. You can even see how it's starting to do some little weird swirl around already. So, not really sure what is going on with that particular goldfish. Everybody else in the tank is doing just fine. I did take one small piece of wood out of the pond here. Uh, and we'll see where that ended up in a little while. We've got a bract, flower bract, whatever you want to call that on my peace lily here. Loaded with pollen. And for whatever reason, the fish seem to enjoy eating the pollen when it hits the surface of the water. Or at least they usually do. They don't seem to be bothering them with it today. But we did just get the lights turned on, so give them some time. If I had done that in the evening, they probably would have been all over it. Uh, last night during my live stream, we got the uh, inflow cleaned out. So we got nice, vigorous water flow coming in. I do need to get under here. This is where my filter is. It's just a crude filter. Uh, I have a pump that actually uh, pumps water down a hose and comes all the way down here and it's blowing this way so it pushes uh, the water up towards this end where the filter is and so I need to get in there and pull that filter pad out, uh, get that replaced and get the water flow back up again. But otherwise we got plenty of water flowing into the tank and we don't have any issues with oxygenation or water circulation or anything like that. Everybody's good and healthy. The tank's nice and clean and clear and we're good to go so let me get these bright lights overhead lights turned off be a little less glare on some of the other tanks as we make our way around the room and we're going to move over here to the 29 miscellaneous i still got my stuff sitting out from last night's live stream so not much going on here you're going to hear that a lot this video because i don't have a whole lot going on we've got a couple of tanks to talk about a couple of new things but otherwise we're just going to sort of go around and have a look at all the tanks and enjoy them for a few minutes we did lose a skirt tetra in this tank a few days ago and you can probably see how few tetras we now have swimming around there's one down against the glass in the back there's another one of those red blue Buenos Aires tetras I got a couple of those I've got a couple of the black skirt tetras still lurking back there and of course we've still got my beautiful angelfish over there in the corner uh, trimmed out the plants not too long ago but this Anubius here is getting very big and lush and we might have to get in there and trim this Anubius down here at some point in the future but we just did a plant trimming, so I'm not going to worry about that just yet. I'm also not going to worry about it until we've got a um, slightly more crowded tank once we get it restocked and get some new fish in there uh, at some point. Remember, we've got to wait for the old fish to die off, and once we've got an empty tank, we can do something new with this. So within the next year or so, I'm suspecting we'll get to put some new fish here in the 29. That'll be exciting. Uh, I say this all the time, but when you are a fish keeper par excellence like myself, 
uh, you got to wait a long time between fish because they just keep on living and being healthy. And it's hard to replace fish in a tank when they never die. And so we just kind of have to be patient and wait for some of the population in these tanks to dwindle a little bit. And then I'll be able to start adding some new fish and changing it up. But in the meantime, we're looking at my 55-gallon garami tank. Just got in here last night during the live stream, did a big water change, got the glass cleaned down, the water's nice and sharp and clear. And that's about all that we've got going on in the tank. No losses, no additions or anything else. Striped Raphael's hanging out just fine. If you'll remember not too long ago, I said that that Striped Raphael had some sort of white mark or something on the side. It looked like a little pimple or a growth. Well, that kind of came and went and did its thing. So I didn't worry about it, and I was right not to worry about it. Nothing ever became of it. My tiger lotus is still doing well, still growing in. Looking good, putting out new pads. So hopefully that will continue to grow, and we'll actually have some nice red tiger lotus in this tank. All the grommies are doing well. All the skirt tetras are doing well. And all my loaches are doing well. These first thing early in the morning uh, around the world are usually not very active when it comes to the fish. And that is because, as I said, I just got the lights turned on, as you saw, and everybody's still kind of figuring out that the day has just begun. So this problematic one with the tumors on his nose has been alive and has been swimming around with these tumors on its face for a couple of years now. Now sometimes those tumors will break off or get knocked off or something and it'll you'll still see growth on its nose but not much and then they grow back and they get bigger and bigger and so right now they're the biggest I've ever seen them and I'm wondering why he hasn't gotten them knocked off of his face or something so like I said I'm not worried about it it's been there for a very long time I do have one other fish that has something like that going on on its face but I do not see it at the moment. It's one of my um, diamond tetras. I had my uh, high zoom camera in here and I was trying to do some macro filming of some of the uh, diamonds. And when I zoomed in on one of them, I noticed that its face, I believe it's that one right there, its face also has some of those little tumors. Yeah, there you go, see it? It's got that little tumor growing off the tip of its nose. So I don't know if that's contagious. If it is, it's not very contagious because, again, that one's been in there for years looking like that. And the one that has it, the skirt or the diamond toucher that has it, it's so small that I didn't even notice it until I zoomed in with macro. So I'm not going to worry about it on that fish either, although I will say that I will not be pulling any fish out of this tank and putting them in any of my others. Otherwise, nothing really to speak of in this tank. Haven't done a water change or maintenance or anything on this tank in quite a while. It's just sort of ticking over and looking good. So moving on to my 40 breeder. Haven't done any real work in here lately, but I have been skimming the duckweed off the top once it gets a little too grown in. Last night was one of those nights. Uh, once again, during my Friday night live stream, I got in there and skimmed a bunch of that duckweed off the top. The surface was almost completely covered. You couldn't see any light really shining directly into the tank at all. And that's a shame because this is a beautiful, lush, green tank. And you couldn't see hardly any of it because it was so dark in there. Got my angelfish, Frank Gorshin. He's doing well. But as I've always complained, it's hard to get a good video of an angelfish because they always swim straight at you and you can't ever see them if I can convince them to come sideways a little bit. And I'm not going to be able to. A lot of times if you make some splashing in the water, they'll think you're dropping food in there and they'll go over and try to get it. So you can get a little bit of a sideways view of him, but again, angelfish seldom cooperate when you're trying to get video of them. And that's about it. Not much to talk about. So we're going to move on for time reasons. And we're going to check out my other 125-gallon Daryl. Um, this tank used to be a native tank. Then I started calling it my New World tank because it had mostly New World fish in it. 
and now it's got as many old world fish in it well maybe not as many but it's got plenty of old world fish in it and so for reasons i'm not going to explain now i usually just call this my other 125 daryl and most people either know what that means or it just doesn't matter so this is my other 125 and as i keep saying not a lot going on in here uh, this is often what you will see my tanks looking like when it's not during one of my live streams where we're walking around feeding everybody. Um, I do have a lot of silver dollars. They're all sort of hiding underneath of the Anubius. And remember, the lights coming on just a few minutes ago also has to do with why the tanks are so subdued. Got my Anubius still growing up out of the top looking good. A little bit of Pothos plant growing out of the corner. Got quite a collection of spider webs going on down here. In fact, my switch has spider webs all over it. So that is about it for my. Well, we just got to look at my big pleco, and it was being chased miraculously by my little pleco. I have a little tiny clown pleco right there. Uh, was chasing this guy now I saw him on the glass the other day I do have a video I don't know if I've posted it yet by the time you're seeing this but I do have a video of him hanging on the glass on the back side of the tank and I was able to get some real close-ups of its face and mouth where it was stuck to the glass its teeth and everything so that was pretty cool looking uh, but yesterday it was hanging on the glass here in the front and it was all the way up here so its tail hung all the way down and it was fully extended just hanging there and I went ahead and measured it and it is exactly at this point 12 inches from the tip of its nose right to the tip of its tail uh, so I now have a foot long fish I've never had a fish that grew to be a foot before but this pleco you can see hiding right there is now one foot long so moving on, we're going to see the first real new thing I've had to look at for quite a long time, and that is my former snail tank is now a shrimp tank. Uh, Ark Knight, one of my viewers, gave me a bunch of shrimp in the mail, and I set this tank up real quick. I just threw some stuff together. Let me try putting this, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not with the cords back there but if I can get this piece of that makes it look a little better you're not seeing the bucket behind it you're just seeing a nice dark background so I've got some crypt I put in right here this is Java uh, fern and there's probably still some Java moss that is in the tank that's gonna wind up starting to grow and fill in and so we're gonna have Java moss in there at some point pretty soon but this piece of wood was absolutely covered in cyanobacteria when I put it in there. And within about three days now, you can see almost the entirety of the wood and the complete covering of cyanobacteria is almost gone. I cannot believe how fast these shrimp are just devouring that cyanobacteria. I didn't really think anything ate cyanobacteria but these shrimp absolutely destroy it. We got one right here. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little shrimp right there on the corner. And they are just all over that piece of wood. I haven't fed them since I put them in there on that first day. I've been watching how much they're eating that cyanobacteria. And it doesn't seem like they need any food. They just seem to be ignoring the stuff I'm putting in there. We do have a little bit of frog bit floating on the surface. And you can see I've still got some of my original... Uh, Java moss as part of the filter. I did lay a new filter pad in there. It's clogged up and overflowing at this point So we're gonna have to go ahead and replace that little pad But once that Java moss gets to growing again and filling that whole area in I Won't really worry about putting a mechanical filter in there at all I'll just let the Java moss be sort of like a living filter like I had it before and That'll be fine So that's the first new addition we've had in the fish room in quite a while and these, other than some ghost shrimp I've had in the past, these are the first uh, real fancy shrimp I've ever had. And so we're going to have to wait and see what happens with them. But they've been in there for several days now. They seem to be doing well. Uh, I lost one on shipment, and I lost one in the tank after I put them in there. So I lost two that I know of. And as far as I can tell, everybody else is still doing well. There's about a dozen shrimp in there maybe a little more than a dozen shrimp in there so hopefully we'll get them breeding i can try spreading them out putting them in some other tanks 
and we'll see what happens. So we're gonna move on to my fancy goldfish tank. And I just did a water change on this tank last night. We got the glass wiped down. I got my filter pads changed and my hang on the back filters back there. Didn't do anything with the sponge filter, but don't really need to do much with the sponge filter except a few times a year, get in there and squeeze it out and get all the gunk out of it. But we didn't worry about doing that yesterday because it didn't need it. And otherwise, not a whole lot going on here with the fancy goldfish. That's Bruce Brown. The big black one is named Wednesday. And that one there is Melissa Fish. So Melissa Fish and Wednesday are both Oranda goldfish. You can see the little bit of the wen, the brain sac. My Wednesday back there, I know it's really hard to see and it's very small and dainty because she is a dainty little girl. But she also has the head sac because that is also an Oranda. Uh, she is my fanciest fish by far, as I say all the time. She is a peacock fantail Oranda. And then Bruce Brown back there is just a fantail fancy goldfish. He's not an Oranda, doesn't have that head sac. He just has that forked fantail. And believe it or not, this fish is younger than this fish so she's not growing really fast at all but bruce brown back there is growing like a monster he's a beast he's almost as big as wednesday is now and wednesday was pretty big when i got her she was given to me as a gift and she was already uh fairly large i'm not going to say full grown i think these goldfish can get up to about 10 inches when they're full grown so we've still got quite a ways to go and we're going to have to obviously do something about them being in a 40 gallon tank at some point, this tank is going to have to get upgraded, or at least, no, the tank won't get upgraded, but their home will get upgraded. You know what I mean. All right, moving on to my discus tank, my other, other 125. Uh, the only thing we've got going on in here is my Tanapoma has this blister on its chin. I don't know what it's from. It's not getting any bigger, it's not getting any uglier or any worse, but he has this weird blister on his chin. It looks like he got burned by something, um, or maybe, you know, slammed a door. It's not a blood blister, so it doesn't look like that, um, if you've ever had a blood blister. This just looks like a normal blister. It looks like he got a little burn, uh, or perhaps his shoe was rubbing on his chin the wrong way and left a little blister there. So I don't know if it's going to heal up and go away. I don't know if that's just something he has on his face from now on. Not really sure what's going on with that little blistered area. Uh, once again, last night, got in here, did a really big water change, got the glass wiped down, and we removed some duckweed, and that's about it. I didn't get in there and do any work on the filter uh, or anything like that. And then nothing else in the tank really needed any concern. There's no real trimming on the plants to do. Again, I did remove a little bit of duckweed, but that's just per usual. I do that all the time because the duckweed is indeed a weed and it grows like it. So other than having a nice long look at this tank, because this is, in my opinion anyway, this is my most beautiful tank. And I do enjoy standing here uh, gazing upon it. So I've got eight discus in there right now. I originally had 10. I lost one to bullying. And then I had a second one that was being bullied and I recognized what was going on early enough that I was able to get it out of here. And if you noticed earlier in the video, you saw that one blue discus in my 55 on the other side of the room. Uh, that is the fish that was being bullied and got pulled out of the tank and has basically spent its life in that 55 all by itself where it's doing well, it's nice and happy. And as a cichlid, it does not necessarily need companionship. You can get away with having a group of discus in your tank like I'm doing here, but again, just like angelfish, uh, they do just fine all by themselves as well, as far as I can tell. And being discus, I mean, uh, being cichlids, they are at least somewhat aggressive. I would put the discus aggression on the same scale, maybe even a little lower than angelfish aggression. Angelfish can be pretty 
uh, chill for a long time and then suddenly when they go into spawning mode you'll find some like serious aggression coming out of them whether they're actually spawning or not I haven't really noticed that with my discus I did see them spawning a couple times and the two that were actively spawning uh, tended to keep people away from their area but it was not the same kind of aggression that I tend to see with angelfish when they go into the spawning mode so even though they are cichlids I would definitely put the discus in a less aggressive tier than I would put angelfish so as far as uh, as far as cichlids go they're pretty low on the aggression scale but nonetheless they are cichlids and they will still get in there and fight at times and they will be uh, just fine if you have them in a tank all by themselves so that's about all we got going on with the discus tank like I said nothing really new happening I haven't had any flower spikes coming up on my uh, tiger lotus hopefully those pads will keep filling in and we'll get some slapping pads here in the near future we'll get to slap some pads again haven't had any chance to slap any pads in a while and if you want to see me slap my pads, you'll have to join me for my live streams. Every Friday night, Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, I do a live stream. And then, of course, I do a live stream for my members only every Wednesday at 8 p.m. So if you'd like to join up for membership, it's $2.99 a month. And that will also get you access to my Discord server. We have over 100 people in the Discord server now. It's a nice, thriving community. And if you'd like to be a part of it, you can sign up for membership for $2.99 a month. And that gets you full access to the whole members area. That includes the additional live stream every week. It includes access to all of the Discord stuff. You'll get some emojis, some stickers and badges and stuff. Well worth the $2.99 a month if you're interested in becoming a member of the community. Otherwise, we are going to move on. We're going to look at my betta fish tank here. Probably ought to get in there and get some of that duckweed uh, cleaned out. It's not terrible. You can actually see gaps between the individual duckweeds. So that lets you know it's got room to grow. As far as the fish in the tank, uh, same old, same old. Everybody's just doing okay. This tank generally turns over like a clock. You can see Gilgalad, my betta fish right there. And if you look really carefully in the back, you can kind of almost see this little squiggly looking thing. That is my banjo catfish hiding in the back. And then I've got the guppies and I've got one or two ember tetras still in the tank. I did have a clown pleco, but we lost the clown pleco a few months ago. So that is no longer here. Uh, I'm not sure if everyone's aware of that, but we did lose the clown pleco that was in this tank. And then otherwise, everything is just sort of turning over. This is another one of those tanks I seldom have any trouble with. The most problem I have with this tank is keeping the top clear enough to let light in uh, so you can see what's going on in there and letting other plants grow. My quarantine tank is currently empty, so there's nothing to even look at in there. I threw some snails in there just so that they could eat some of the algae off the glass or whatever, but they're just pond snails. Um, they're not nearites or mystery snails or anything fancy. So moving on to the saddest part of the video, I usually end up here with what was once Butterbean's tank, and I always say last but not least, we're going to have a look at Butterbean, but alas... Butterbean is no longer with us. I'm sure most of you know that by now. But I don't have any idea what happened. Butterbean was fine one night. I did my live stream. We got him, you know, we, we showed the camera on his tank for quite a while. Watched him swim around. Nobody said he looked funny. I didn't think he looked funny. And the next day I came downstairs and he looked really funny. His stomach was all weird, misshapen. It wasn't bloated. It was lumpy. It was weird. Uh, it looked like he swallowed gravel or something, which he very well may have, for all I know. I don't know what happened to him. But he was swimming around looking rough, and within an hour he was dead. And I flushed him, so he's gone. And again, it was a bummer. It was sad. I'm still upset about it, honestly. I'm not, you know, crying myself to sleep over it, but I definitely do get upset about it. I'm not super attached to most of my fish. Uh, I've seen so many fish come and go over the years, it's just not a big deal. But there are some fish that I do get personally attached to, and Butterbean was certainly one of them. Uh, not only 
did he have a huge amount of personality. He was one of my very first fish. He was one of the driving forces of my channel. A lot of people uh, got introduced to my channel because of Butterbean. There's a lot of people around the world that got into brackish fish or brackish fish keeping, keeping puffers, uh, and Butterbean was responsible for all of that. So he's got quite a legacy, and he was a living legend in his time, and he was only 10 when he passed. So I personally, I don't think that's very old at all. A lot of people keep saying he had a nice long life. I was expecting at least another few, you know, three, four, five years out of him at least. I was hoping secretly I would get 20 out of him, but I was expecting at least 13 to 15. Um, and if he had faded away, you know, if I had been noticing him getting worse and worse over the weeks, it would have been a little less shocking, a little less stunning. But to have him perfectly healthy one day and then gone the next, quite literally, um, was a bit upsetting. So the only other fish that I currently have that I'm probably going to get upset about like this when he passes is going to be uh, the Tenopoma that we've got in this tank we were just looking at a few minutes ago. That's another one of my very old fish, and I have a pretty emotional connection with that fish. Uh, I even refer to him as my buddy. Uh, he's just a really cool fish. I've had him for a long time. He's one of my earliest fish, and he's already lived beyond what his normal life expectancy would be, so probably not too much longer uh, on that one. But again, hopefully we'll get a few more years out of him, and he will be an extremely long-lived fish. In the meantime, my 40 here, Butterbean's old tank, has been converted over into this minnow tank. I caught a whole bunch of minnows out at the boat launch, I do not know if they're all the same species. I think they are. I think I was catching them all out of the same uh, large area of schooling fish. And they were all in the same, you know, general area in the very, very shallow water right up against the shoreline. And so I'm suspecting I've got all of the same species of fish. But it's entirely possible that I have two or three or four different species of fish in there. Who knows if I got one or two little oddballs of some other species. But unless we get something that's going to be significantly different, you know, unless there's a baby perch in there or there's a baby sunfish in there, which I can already tell you there isn't. Um, but unless we got some very different fish, I don't think we're ever going to be able to identify like, oh, look at that one right there has the black line is a little bit wider than the black line on the other ones. You know, it's just not going to be that kind of scenario. They're all going to look so similar that even if they are technically different species, we'll probably never know about it. They're all just going to be some sort of shiner. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we never even fully positively identify them. Um, I do believe they are some sort of Notropus species, but there are a lot of Notropus species, and they all look very similar. And so I'm probably just going to refer to them as some sort of Notropus, or probably I'll just refer to them as minnows or shiners or something like that because uh, that's it's all academic it doesn't really matter what they're called it's not like i'm going to breed them it's not like i'm doing any studies on them or anything like that i just like having a lot of little fish in a tank and this is a good way to do that on the cheap when i'm tired of them or when they get too big it's time to move on or do something different with the tank i can easily get rid of them it's a very very low investment it didn't take me much to catch them it won't take me much to get rid of them and it didn't cost anything in the interim so there you go, everybody, around the world, got back to where we started, get the light in the pond turned back on, and I'm going to say thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed your trip around the world with me. So don't forget, as I keep saying, every Friday night and Sunday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, I do a live stream for two to three hours. So I do that Friday nights and Sunday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And, of course, if you want to join up for membership, as I said, you can hit that Join button right below the video you're watching right now. And at the very least, you can go down below the video and hit that Like button, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that good YouTube stuff. And hopefully I will see you this Friday on my upcoming live stream. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you real soon.